In contemporary discussions, society is often seen as an entity out there, separate from the individuals who compose it. Most people view society as a fixed external system upheld by collective behaviors and norms. When problems arise, it's common to say society is to blame as if it is some external entity. But what if society as we commonly perceive it doesn't actually exist as an entity at all? What if it's a narrative we all believe and act out while failing to see how it's a product of our internalized cultural norms and psychological constructs? From a non-dual perspective, the way society is understood and maintained through a dualistic lens is inherently flawed. Because this perspective shifts the focus from society as an external force to seeing society as an internalized structure within each person's psyche. The key difference is this. Society isn't an aggregate of people, but rather a reflection of the internalized norms and conditioning passed through generations, which shape how we act, think and feel. Think about the time when you felt pressured to conform to societal expectations. Where do you think that pressure comes from? Is it really something that comes from outside? These feelings that you feel, this pressure, or is it something within you? And I would like to add that I studied the collective shadow of Western civilization the last eight years from a Jungian depth psychological lens. So this is not just coming out of nowhere for me. That is where my definition comes from. And it's partly also because, well, I'm no longer operating in the dualistic framework that most people operate in. Hence, why my way of viewing things is for some rather perplexing from their dualistic perspective, as mine is non-dual. So I don't operate from the same lens of self versus other, but from the interconnectedness of being, where such projections and externalizations fall away. And really, most people approach society with the belief that it exists, like I said, out there as a fixed and external force that dictates norms, values and behaviors. They assume that in order to fit in, they must conform to these norms because society expects it. And this dualistic perspective causes a separation between the individual and the collective, reinforcing the idea that society is a rigid entity that governs behavior. But here is the paradox. If everyone points to society as something outside themselves. Where exactly is it located? If society is made up of all of us, but we all look to it as something separate, we create basically a self-perpetuating loop of projection. So everyone is acting as though society exists as an external reality, while it is actually a psychological construct projected outward from our internalized norms and beliefs. Even if we talk about modern society, we, we might sometimes mean actually other people. But the thing is that it's a projection, an externalization of something internal. And it doesn't actually exist in that external way, because everyone believes that it does. Because everyone believes that it does, it does. But if people wouldn't, you can see where I'm going with this. But it is not only visible with that, but also looking throughout history as well. A key insight of this non-dual perspective is also recognizing that society isn't fixed. It evolves over time and across cultures. What we consider society today is vastly different from what it was in the 1950s, or even from historical societies such as ancient Rome or Egypt. So if society were a static entity, it wouldn't have undergone the significant shifts we have seen over time. For example, in the 1950s, societal norms were far more rigid in terms of gender roles, racial integration, and expectations of family life and marriage. 
Now contrast this with the present day, where many of these norms have radically changed. And looking further back into history, we can see how the societal structures of ancient Rome or Egypt, with their specific norms around class, governance and religion, were also subject to transformation. The societies, though powerful in their time, eventually crumbled or evolved as their internalized norms and beliefs shifted. And this highlights an important point. Society is not a static thing, it is always in flux, evolving with the beliefs, customs and narratives of the people within it. And this fluidity underscores the fact that society is not a fixed external entity, but a set of evolving psychological and cultural constructs. So just as individuals grow and change, so too does society, because it is nothing more than a reflection of the collective psyche of the people who comprise it. That through psychological complexes create a narrative about archetypal patterns from parent, man and woman to various other narratives the culture has. In this way, society is not a tangible independent force. It is a narrative we all participate in, often unconsciously. The moment we begin to challenge these internalized beliefs and see society as something fluid, created through our actions and choices, we can begin to dismantle its hold on us. Dualistic thinking you know, generally separates the world into binaries, good versus bad, self versus other, individual versus society. And this approach to society leads people to see the world in simplistic, fixed terms, assuming there is an us and a them, and that societal norms are immutable. Yet in reality, society is constantly in flux. So it is not fixed. And the dualistic view prevents us from seeing the complexities of how our internal worlds influence the outer world. This is where my non-dual perspective comes in. This non-duality emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things, rejecting simplistic separations. And from this lens, society isn't an external monolith, but a living, dynamic process shaped by the psyche and shared through collective belief. The norms we internalize are, in essence, psychological constructs, complexes that are formed through long-term conditioning, generational beliefs, and social influence. And they can be challenged, dismantled, and restructured, without needing to, quote-unquote, fight something externally. So when I talk about society as the culprit in many of my videos, I don't mean something external, but the cultural complexes that dictate these internalized behaviors and norms. And in union terms, the norms and expectations of society can be likened to the persona, a kind of mask that we wear to fit into societal roles. And this persona is, well, necessary to navigate the world, but... It is also a construct that can be challenged and redefined. Society, then, is nothing more than a collection of shared personas, a narrative we all agree to follow, but which isn't fixed or inherent to reality itself. Because if we take all these narratives away in the culture war, with all these ideologies and all this stuff that is going on, we just take it all away and we just let every single human being just be in the moment without anything going on, like nothing, then really what it is is just a bunch of humans in a bunch of brick buildings and that's fucking it. All this going back and forth towards work and all the other busy things that we're doing is all shaped by, well, a bunch of internalized beliefs. And we only do these things because, well, that is how we do things. Because, well, we don't know any better. But ignorance isn't really an excuse for doing things forever a certain way, because there's a very important thing regarding this. Why all of this is so important? Because the environment changes, and with that, the norms and the stories, the narratives, also have to adapt, and they have to reconnect to the archetypal core. But also, for example, if we take a group of children from one society, so let's say all the children of uh, Western civilization, and raise them in another culture, 
that original society will cease to exist when the older generation dies. Then just bricks and ruins might remain, but the essence of the society is gone. Basically further demonstrating that society's existence is dependent on the beliefs, customs and norms of the people which are passed down through internalized conditioning. But those beliefs are not inherent to the people themselves. They are psychological complexes that can be examined and ultimately dissolved. So in that sense the real solution to society's problems isn't found in external reform alone. True change happens internally first. So if individuals go through a process of deep psychological healing to confront and dismantle the harmful norms they've internalized, society also changes bit by bit. And this work, however, cannot be done in isolation. Unions then also often refer to the scapegoat complex regarding this as well, which includes the wounded victim child aspect within each of us. And this complex can only be healed through corrective experiences, moments of being held in a safe, accepting space where we can process our wounds in relationship to others. So healing from societal conditioning requires us to come together in supportive environments where we can challenge the old narratives and replace them with new ones. And this is not about, you know, fixing others or imposing change on anyone. It is about holding space for each other so that healing can take place. It's about acceptance of the authentic self of the individual. And by holding space, we create the conditions for people to work through their internalized norms and beliefs, which in turn changes the collective. So it's about shifting the way we relate to society from within. And some may argue that this process is merely habitus, the idea that social structures are ingrained through repeated behaviors and interactions as posited by sociologist Pierre Bourdieu. However, this explanation is still too limited from a non-dual perspective, as habitus focuses on the repetition of behavior and norms, but it does not fully account for the deep psychological mechanisms that govern why we adopt these norms in the first place. And why it's so darn difficult to overcome them through cognitive or behavioral effort alone. Because the thing is, the norms we internalize are not just habitual patterns. They are complexes in the psyche that stem from deeper personal and societal wounds, fears and traumas which distort the archetypal narratives of the collective unconscious. What Plato would call the eternal forms, the higher truths beyond the shadows of societal norms and their internalized complexes that are not at all these eternal forms. While habitus may explain the surface level perpetuation of norms, it is the unconscious complexes beneath the surface that need to be addressed if we are to truly transform society. And by going deeper into the psyche, we can begin to untangle the root causes of these norms and the collective behaviors they produce. This is a process of both individual and collective healing, which requires a shift in consciousness. Through this series, I aim to show how this process unfolds and how, by working together and holding space for one another, we can collectively dismantle the harmful norms that have been internalized, ultimately leading to a society that is more fluid, authentic and aligned with our deeper truths and the deeper archetypal form and truths of existence, beyond Plato's cave that keeps us trapped in illusion. So the entire series I'm creating shows you how to liberate yourself from these ingrained norms and collective archetypal distorted narratives to reconnect with the eternal forms. Liberating yourself from the scapegoat complex as well, because a lot of it really boils down to duality in the deepest sense. And the scapegoat complex also tackles the inner critic, and with that what the Freudians would say, the Freudian superego, to, well, change the relationship to it. And with that, transcend the rigidness of it, where we can liberate ourselves and be authentic.